what I want you to, to get out of it is, or what I want to try to convey is, like um, some reasons for decision making. Show you the, the basis of some decisions that's being made. We'll go over the, uh, the policies, we'll go over like the uh, parameters, things like that. Don't get hung up on, on that. That's not uh, the importance of this class to me. Uh, for me, what's important is that you take something back that's practical. You take something back that you can apply. And the majority of all the folks in the fire department don't run against the purchasing policy. You're not making, you're not uh, part of the budget building process, you're not, uh, but you do factor in on, on things. So what I want to take out of it, more than the details of the policy and the parameters, is the application part, how it, how it applies to you. Also answer some of your whys. For me, going downtown, I, went, I got promoted in 2015 to Battalion 70, and honestly it was like, Look behind the curtain at Oz. You know, I, I, there's a lot of questions I had come from this side of why do we do this? Why don't we do this? And and taking part in the meetings, taking part in outside of the fire department to see really how we relate, how we are affiliated with other agencies and with Louisville Metro as a whole. So we're answering a bunch of my questions. So, and, and so for me to take this opportunity answer some whys, uh, uh, try to put you a, a little bit ahead of where I was at because you know, all of us come through the same, same uh, steps. So uh, feel free to ask. Feel free, if you got something, uh, ask it. So with that, we'll, we'll get started. <clears throat> so the objectives, you know, look at the types of fundings we have, look at uh, where our resources come from, we'll look over the budget process, uh, talk about the differences in our budget, the way it's laid out. Uh, we have parameters there that the way the budget is designed of different rules apply. We'll look over like the details of the process somewhat. We'll skim through there, but how the budget process starts. January 1st usually kicks off conversation with OMB. Um, we'll start getting We'll start going with meetings, quarterly meetings, see where we're at in our current budget. What is it going to look like? We'll just start conversation moving forward. What uh, the next budget's going to look like. Before we do an official meeting with OMB, I'll sit with each of our bureaus. I'll go to Arson. Uh, no, we'll meet together at headquarters, but I'll sit with Arson, Fire Prevention, the shop, uh, and we'll go over what's your what does it look like coming up? What, what are you going to need uh, starting July 1? Do you have any big expenses coming up? Are you kind of flat on your budget? Are, did, did, did you have enough money from last time? Uh, what are we looking like? From there, we'll start making our adjust in the request for going forward. Uh, after meeting with the bureaus, um, as a chief staff, we'll set and meet. Um, chief always has uh, an agenda. He's always pushing forward and Colonel Axon may have some input. Crony and I are the two real big spenders. Uh, ultimately the budget, I oversee the budget, but Crony and I are the big spenders out of it. Uh, so we'll work together on uh, many projects. Facilities it is really expensive. Uh, as the fiscal year starts to wind down, we'll start borrowing money from him, usually. He, he's got a lot of money, uh, depending on how training goes, like for recruit class, we, you know, he's giving us $30,000 as an example to put the gate in out here. Um, that goes toward facility, so we're, we're borrowing money. But all these things are part of our decision making, part of our planning. We look at our strategic plan. What does it look like for the next five or six years? What does it look like for the upcoming year? Uh, then we present our request to the mayor. He looks over it, he prepares it, and then he goes in front of the council to present it for approval. Council ultimately has the approval or denial of a budget. They can amend it, they can add to it, uh, vote it down. But by law, 
before the end of June 30th, we have to have a new budget established, have to have one in place. So. Budget again, begins in January. Uh, we're going to meet, we meet with OMB. When we meet with OMB, uh, one of the things that, that have been brought up, we present everything that we want. We present our needs. Uh, that doesn't guarantee that's what we're getting. And, uh, we, we're making our case for uh, what our budget needs are, we're making a case for our capital needs, what our requests are. These meetings take place and we'll have multiple meetings throughout the budget process, but ultimately they just they decide what our budget is. And that's based on, you know, we have the chain of command structure, they have the same thing. Mayor starts at the top, he's feeding down to the different agencies, and they have the input on where money goes. Um, Everybody's fighting for money. Every agency's fighting for money. Every new department that's built, office of, is fighting for money. So we had multiple conversations and different presentations. From this current year we're in, the city's bud uh, overall budget is $1.3 billion. 715 is as the general fund. 343 is the capital. The difference in those, the general fund, that's where our uh, operating budget comes in. The capital is <clears throat> like where our vehicles are purchased from. Our, we got the burn building capital. Two different line items. Uh, and I'll explain that further as we go along, but uh, the city has $715 million. They're distributing for all, uh, all agencies. One thing to know, by law, the city can't carry debt, right? The city, as of, uh, at the end of each budget cycle, they have to be zero. They, they can't borrow money. Uh, so that's, that's, when conversation comes up to why can't we overspend, why can't we just, that, I mean, by law, the city can't, so they're trying to put, you know, they're holding us to uh, how we spend. Where does our money come from? The majority of all of our money comes from uh, taxes. It comes from the general fund, which comes from taxes. Miscellaneous revenue, we have the uh, CPR center. That takes in about $100,000 a year. Um, from there, we, we take money from there to help with uh, things that aren't dedicated, like we've bought AEDs before. We bought garage doors before. We put windows in some of the fire stations. Uh, that money normally doesn't cost hundred thousand uh, dollars to run CPR, so that's that's miscellaneous revenue. Transfer between departments. This doesn't apply to us a whole lot anymore. Uh, that's when we was working on med units. That's when we was working on suburban apparatus, and that's where your transfer be between departments come from. The uh, KPFFIP receipts, that's our state incentive. That comes from the state of Kentucky. Louisville Metro pays the overtime on our, our uh, when we uh, work overtime, they pay the overtime portion of our state incentive. We take in donations. Donations have to go in front of the council to be approved, but those come back to the, and that's just part of the policy, that comes back to the department to be used Sometimes they're designated, like I want this used for this purpose. Other times it's a general donation. And grant funding. <coughs> grant funding's a, uh, one that I take a big part in and Major Jones takes a big part in. Um, outside of that, uh, there's not many. Fire prevention has applied a couple times. Um, but outside of that, grants are, are an option, but they come with their own work, you know. I'll go back here. Our budget out of the $715 million general fund, the fire department's current budget is $83 million. <clears throat> Responsibilities for this class, for teaching you, moving forward, and for your current positions. 
um, what does our budget include? You know, it's our wages, it's our benefits, uh, it's all of our facility repairs, it's any improvement we make in the facilities. Um, it's not the purchase of the apparatus. The purchase of the apparatus is going to come out of capital. But it's all the maintenance of the apparatus. It's the fuel for the apparatus. Uh, as, as your current role and moving forward, make you more responsible for the use of these funds to show you, you know, we have a minimal pool. What's the best way to use them? What's the best way to uh, preserve them? And then you're bound by your procurement policy, your purchasing policy. Um, you know, the elimination of wasteful practice, that's, that speaks for itself of uh, taking care of our properties and things. <clears throat> All right, understanding the budget functions. We'll go into how our budget's broke down, how it's kind of parceled out, and, and what you can purchase, what you can spend for. The budget is a long-term guide for our decision making. It helps, you know, our strategic plan. Um, we're forecasting out like we know we need to purchase about nine more apparatus. So the budget's good decision making for that. For the uh, facility side, I know about, I have a good idea for about the next six years what we're going to be spending money on facilities. So the budget helps set this up. Our budget's pretty consistent uh, for what we get, so we're setting up like uh, uh, our spending plan. That gives us the opportunity to do long-term planning. Same as forecasting tool, but you have to be disciplined in it, right? We're not allowed to just freely spend, we're not allowed to just run over. So, uh, you know, an example would be for us, we, we've consistently got $700,000 for our facilities. We know that a roof is going to cost $200,000, and we got the dates of all of our roofs. So Engine 8 is going to be our next roof. Engine 12 is about 42 years old. Uh, that's going to be the next roof. So we know not this year, but the next fiscal year. Uh, as long as 12 isn't leaking, uh, we're going to replace that two years from now. But we know Engine 8 is going to be replaced this fiscal year. Uh, so what do you do when, like Engine 1, when that Skylight thing blew off the other day because of the storm? Right. What do you do? You start adjusting your priorities and adjusting. So there's no like insurance? Plans. Like it's not like insurance to where? No. No, that's, that's on us. So we wasn't planning on Truck 2 this year. Truck 2's plumbing just exploded. I mean, it, it, it completely rotted out. It, <laughs> from across the apparatus floor up. So truck two, we spent a lot of money. Uh, over two fiscal years, truck two's probably had $450,000 done to it, you know. Uh, we wasn't planning on truck two being in that rotation, but once you commit to it now, let's improve the bathrooms. Let's make that our renovation house. Our goal is we got 21 fire stations. If we can renovate one each year, that puts us on a 20 year, your house should be older 20 years, right? Uh, so we've been engine four, engine 18, uh, engine 15, truck two, um, have been the, the latest, but that's the goal, pick up these older houses. Uh, you know, our facilities were, 18 of our 21 facilities are older than 40 years old. You know, six of them's older than 100 years old. Uh, I think 17 out of the 21 is older than 50. So, engine 10 is our newest house and it's 12. <clears throat> so, these are all things that we look at in our planning and our spending. And that, that helps make our decisions, you know, on things. Uh, expense budget. So for us, it, it's terminology here they call it operating budget or general fund. Our, our money comes from the city's general fund, but you'll hear me talk about a personnel portion of our budget and operation portion of our budget. So terminology, you know, it, it varies time to time, but uh, again, you're planning for the future. The personnel side of our budget, our total budget's 83 million. The personnel side 
carries all of our salaries, all of our fringe benefits. Our operations side gets into our supplies, equipment purchases, uh, contracts, things that we have to maintain. Our budget is set up into a line item and with that line item, it's, it's detailed to say electrical equipment, uh, lawn service, landscaping, and it's detailed down to where we, can, we know exactly what we spend on. Uh, now, out of that, we can pull, so if over the course of this year you don't spend $3,000 in landscaping, we can pull whatever the balance is and help put that toward facilities. We can put that toward, we roofed uh, two garages over here uh, for training. But Cliff scours through the budget, where can we find little pockets of money to help but with facilities. But it's all detailed into our budget. Um, and that also it gives you the guidelines to stay in budget. This is a breakdown of, all, of how <clears throat> uh, we manage. So our personnel cost, our total budget is $83 million. Our personnel cost is $78 million of that, 94%. We have $5 million to run all the operations of the entire fire department. That's our fuel, that's our technology, building maintenance, uh, vehicle maintenance, all of our supplies, cleaning, custodial, uh, med equipment, heating fire equipment, um, gas and lights, you know, utility, that's what the 511 is. We have $5 million to pay all of our uh, cost. So why is this important? Started out to talk about uh, how decisions are made, what, you know, historic decisions made, current decisions are made. Throughout our careers, you know, uh, we've closed fire stations. We've made cuts in different areas. And presented with a cut, it's not, it's not an ask, you know, it's a, hey, we need you to trim 5% out of your budget. Where would you pull it from? Where would you, where would you take a $3 million reduction from? It takes us about one point, currently about $1.9 million to run a single engine house. So we need, we need $3 million. Where are you going to get it from? We got $5 million to run the whole fire department. What would you trim? You know, so this here is, this to me is one of my whys. Like, well, why can't we cut this? Why can't we cut that? Why can't we get rid of our non-essential staff. Now that I'm in this position, I get the details of, of hey, you know, our IT person, our lead IT person who's got two degrees and, and this stack of qualifications, I have no, I don't have anything, makes less than our recruits. So if we got rid of all of our non-essential staff. We had to come up with like, Three people, four people, you know. Uh, so you start plucking away at this, you're limited on what your choices are. You're limited on uh, where you're going to pull your money from. That's why these decisions are made. Um, and this is a breakdown of kind of what our spending. Important for our personnel and the operations. That money's not interchangeable uh, for us. At the end of the whole budget, you know, uh, the last three years we've went over in our budget based on personnel costs, based on overtime costs, things like that. Yep. We get a, say we get a contract raise, does the budget increase? They would adjust that, adjust the budget. They would adjust the budget on that. But it's still the 94% regardless. So it kind of still leads you to the same. Well, like there's been years, that number fluctuates a little. There's been years we've been 96.5% personnel. You know, uh, our budget over the last five years has went from mid fifties to eighty three million. You know, so we we've, we've had big increase in our budget. It doesn't translate to the operation side as much. You know, we're, we're paying for raises, or uh, the one year we closed engine eleven, we got nine positions back on the quince, but 
we're getting small adjustments in our operation side. It's not keeping up with the personnel as much, you know. Uh, but that number tends to fluctuate. It's, it's 94 right now. It's been 96, you know. <clears throat> but it is important to know that money's not if at the end of the year, by some chance, we had $3 million left over personnel, we couldn't buy fire apparatus with it. Our capital budget. This here is for our long-term uh, big hit projects. So, and this here, are, we make budget capital budget requests. So every year when we present our budget, uh, we'll highlight seven or eight, nine, requested items. This is what we want our capital. We want, uh, and, and those end up being prioritized, but uh, we want fire station renovation. We want to purchase three apparatus, uh, pumping apparatus, replace a fire station, uh, purchase two aerial devices. Uh, and the list goes on. Capitals aren't always funded. Uh, the going back to the fire station renovation at headquarters as one capital and in between there and now when we got funded for the burn building we've not gotten any capital request um, so capitals are good um, to get I mean they're big ticket items that saves money off your operations but they're not guaranteed the difference in the capital funding and our budget funding. Budget funding, June 30th, your money stops. The capital, it carries over until you spend out. Um, so our budget runs from July 1st, I should have covered that earlier, from July 1st to June 30th, uh, mm -hmm. you don't carry any of that money over. That's, that's, when, when you're setting up your budget, you're setting it for one year. At the end of that year, we go on July 1st, we start brand new, complete, complete start. The capital does carry over, so, but it's for specifics. If we get capital for the burn building, uh, it's for 1.4 million. If it only costs us a million dollars, we can't, that don't give us 400,000 to do anything else with. Uh, so, they're very specific. We, we've gotten money for SCBAs and capital. We've gotten firehouse renovation, uh, but they're not consistent. So uh, this has listed on here, roof replacements. We submit for that, but again, we take, we plan every year to do a roof replacement. Uh, because these are inconsistent, we're trying to, to preserve our living conditions, right? Uh, you couldn't wait on capital to complete all of our projects. So when we take $200,000 out of our operating budget. It's just to preserve our facilities. It's to preserve what we have to further, uh, to lessen uh, further damage. All right, part of how we come up with our budget, we're looking at the past budgets. We're looking at the current budget. What's coming up? What, <coughs> how do we adjust our needs? How do we adjust what we're gonna request? This here just talks about uh, each fiscal year we start a new budget. Uh, there's no carryover. So we're planning for July 1st to June 30th. Um, as far as purchasing goes, we'll get into a little bit of the uh, parameters. For us, uh, we try to spend out on the operation side, we spend out every penny we can spend out. Um, we tend to go over because of, of personnel cost, but on the operation side, we're in control of the spending. So we don't go over, but we do spend all we have. If we buy this water bottle, it has to be on site before June 30th though. We can buy like a, and I'll give the example of in May, here in the next few weeks, we'll be looking at our budget and if we can find eight thousand, ten thousand dollars anywhere throughout that we can pull together, Cliff may go out and buy eleven or twelve water heaters, and he'll store them. But those will be on site, 
and then that's how you carry over for the next fiscal year. He may buy, you know, heating and air units that uh, we can store. And that's coming out of the capital funding? No, no, that's coming out of our operating. Okay. So he's trying to spend that money. He's trying to spend it down, but you have to have it on site. Like he can't pay for something now and get it in August. Uh, but for us, uh, like I say we only got $5 million. He's designated 700000 so he's spending every bit of that. Uh, part of our planning, part of our, uh, uh, this year has been different from the past. In our budget request, they asked us for our deferred maintenance. What, what do we look like? They've never asked that before, so I don't know if they got a different plan. I heard on the news last night, um, Kramer, council person with the overseas budget, was talking about the, the lack of building maintenance for all metro government buildings. Uh, that they're looked at as a landlord. <clears throat> Same expectation we think uh, of a private citizen own, owning buildings, is that they want to preserve their buildings. So they asked for what our deferred maintenance is. Ours, just over $31 million for our properties. Um, and, and that's, could tend to be a little bit light, you know what I mean? Now, we tried to make the case to offset that, to say if you build a fire station for five to $8 million, depending on design, you can take off $200,000 for a roof here. You can take off uh, sixty dollars or $70,000 in concrete repair for here. You can take off, so <clears throat> instead of being a full $5 million, you know, you can get that down to, you can save a million dollars just by deferred maintenance. So instead of being $5 million, it's a $4 million. We estimate engine 17 alone would be a couple million dollars, two and a half million dollars to renovate that. It's a huge fire station. Um, it's got lead paint on it on the outside, so if you go to disturbing that, it's going to cost a bunch of money. Uh, but some of the, the big things that we've done, like the cabinets at Tower 2, $70,000, you know, to put kitchen cabinets in. The truck four, $55,000. Uh, those should last for a long time. Yeah. So you got to have like an approved vendor. Like you have a vendor list. Well, I know somebody said, somebody's like, well, so and so's cousin's company does it. He quoted thirty. Right. You know, you just you could trim so much fat in there. These inflated. So you, you put these things out to bid, and that's some of the parameters that you have to deal with on the uh, on the policy side. Once you lock in a vendor for cabinets. That's who has it year to year. You sign a five year contract, but each year you can, you renew it. Uh, but, you know, we look for contracts that we have, and then we'll look for state contracts. We'll look for, are, are there federal contracts that we can purchase off of? We put those cabinets out to bid and we've not got, we haven't got the $30,000 bid. You know what I mean? Uh, when we redid the concrete at truck two, uh, the front ramp, <clears throat> we got three bids. Two of them were 60,000, one was 60,000, one was 70,000. And the company that was doing work behind truck two, uh, I forget the guy's name, who's, he renovated that whole block, you know. He came to us and he, he was like, uh, we wanna make this area look nice. We wanna do this, we wanna do that. Well, they did it for like 26. So that's, that's the bidding process we're up against. You know, these other two companies, if this other guy didn't have an interest in the area, we would have been double the price of the front ramp. So those are the parameters though. When you have a contract in play, uh, that, that's what you have. Our linen, we, we put our linen out to bid every year for four years. And we only got one bid. We, nobody's interested in our linen. So they kept up in the price. They, they didn't have interest in doing it. You know, we, we fought with our linen. That's where the boxes come into play. We give them phone numbers like, 
if nobody's there, just call us, we'll show up. We put these boxes in play. You don't have to deal with anybody. Put the linen there, take old linen out. Uh, that didn't work. So that was uh, when we switched over to providing linen. You know, that, that was really a welcome to us. I, uh, you guys got to wash them. Uh -huh. Not to the guy that's got to wash them and fold them. Yeah, yeah. So those are, but those contracts, we, we were bound by them. We couldn't, we couldn't buy and provide the linen until that contract was over. Uh, and their service was horrible. But contracts are part of the parameters um, and how they're awarded, how they're um, given is part of a, of a process. Um, so what about like the generator mm -hmm. in truck three right now? Is that like a grant for that generator? No, that's that our operation. Op the budget comes out of our operation. So that is money. That's, that's a great example of how to make your money go so we're spending all our money we have up to june 30th to do a portion of that we'll do the construction side of it um, on july 1st side we'll purchase the generator we'll pay for the generator right uh, it's going to be 175 i think to pay for the generator we're doing 80 or ninety thousand dollars i think of construction side uh, we couldn't pay for that in one fiscal year, so we will split it. Split it. Uh, and that's another project that that we partner with Colonel Crony on. On and we need some. We need money. We need, we have to have it. So uh, he, you know, he's watching his budget. Now his budget is the training. Uh, uh, some of his money comes from fire gear. Like we were going to, uh, a recruit class is supposed to start in April. We projected start in April. We're going to make this purchase of uh, a couple hundred thousand dollars in fire gear in April. That starts June 21st. So you're not going to make that purchase in the fiscal year, right? The gear has to be on place June 30th. Well, now he's got a couple hundred thousand dollars that he's not buying recruit fire gear. So that rolls into our money. He'll take that money and <clears throat> looking at the stock that we have in the basement and he might buy 50 or 60 sets of street gear that's gonna be coming out of cycle, you know, coming out of uh, uh, rotation and stock like that and we'll get a portion of the 200,000. And I'm making 200,000 up. It, it, uh, he, he can get, tell you the price on fire gear. It's crazy high, but... Uh, that's how we exchange money. That's where the partnership comes in there. Uh, for us, you know, one of my responsibilities is overseeing the budget. So for me, I'm gonna do all I can do to stay within the uh, guidelines, stay not going over budget, uh, stay within the policies of, of Metro government has of spending, of uh, which contracts, you know, to operate under and like the spending ranges in them. If there's a contract in place, and the reason why I say about the cabinets, we've got a cabinet contract in place. The bids, you know, I mean, they're just high. So instead of using that contract, we'll put it out to bid. We'll say, well, shoot, let's, let's see who's out there. So we'll put together uh, the specs. We'll give detailed specs of what we want. And then you put that out there to the public to bid on. Um, it hadn't improved, you know, it was still seventy thousand uh, dollars. So we we tried to we tried different routes. Uh, anything fire service price goes up. Anything commercial price goes up. You know our recliners are a thousand dollars a piece, and they're not three hundred dollars. They're. Uh, uh, I mean, it's that's reality, though, right? Uh, so that that's uh, receiving reports really important on your all side. Uh, your current position, get your receiving reports in. Uh, Cliff's the only agent, the only person in Metro 
who challenges these invoices. You know, he, uh, uh, when it comes to the, the companies dealing with the plumbing, HVAC, our electricians, um, nobody else has the ability to. But he takes a receiving report and he's like, Cap said you was here for three hours, you billed us for eight. Here's your times, this is what you did. It's all in this receiver report. This is what I'm gonna pay you for. Well, they don't have any argument against it, right? So that's why those are so important to him that he can make a case. And, and there's nobody, there's nobody who's watching that budget anymore, and nobody who wants to make improvements any more than what he does. You know, he he will replace a light switch to save 80 bucks. He demo the kitchens of truck two. I saved about $1,500 of a $70,000 project. So whatever he can do to make his money stretch, <clears throat> but that's what he relies on those receiving reports to. Look, I'm gonna argue over $200. You, you wasn't there the time you said you was there. And no other agency has somebody 24 hours though who can check that, who can uh, hold those folks accountable. So. Take advantage of that. that. That's the importance of uh, when he asked for the when he asked for those receiving reports. That's what that's for. Mid-year revision <clears throat> in our budget. So our budget goes from July 1st to June 30th. At the beginning of our budget, um, you're either told, "Listen, this year there's no cuts. We're progressing or moving forward with the uh, current budget. We've got some enhancements," or you know, this year we're facing a deficit. There's going to be cuts. I showed you how the, uh, where the cuts come from. You know, based on our salary. A mid-year revision, though, as we're going forward, uh, I'm like, hey, we ain't taking in all the money we expected, we projected. The budget is like a projection of what you're taking in. That that's not money in hand for them. We get mid-year and they're like, we're down a couple percent of what we was expecting. Uh, we're going to make a mid-year adjustment in your budget. So they'll come in and say, give us a cut. We'll cut something. So if you remember back a few years, uh, we didn't hire four overtime positions. Truck one, engine one, engine 15, engine 20. That was due to a mid-year cut. Um, we had come up $750,000. So. <clears throat> your choices, you're, you're doing all these evaluations, you're trying to go through what's permanent, what's not permanent. You had the option to close a house for six months. Uh, those don't come back. Those tend not to come back. Uh, you could have browned out houses. We could have not hired four positions, brown out a house, uh, and it'd just be a rolling cycle. Uh, we had all kinds of options that we, we went through, and what we landed on was just on our four positions, and we counted each position as $1,000 a day. That's your salary, your benefits, your pension, everything rolled in. Uh, that's what that number come from. July 1st, those positions restored, you go back to a normal cycle. Uh, but we don't have $750,000, that's the least what we felt like was the least uh, permanent or, or the you know the least long-term impact <clears throat> for our department uh, that's where it come from that's that's a mid-year revision contractual service uh, dr. O'Brien like professional dr. O'Brien uh, our building maintenance is our electric Heating and air. Excuse me. <clears throat> well, I mean, all these things have to be under contract. One thing that hurts us, uh, we we're not the writer of the contracts, right? <clears throat> Parks, uh, they they have a bunch of contracts. So when it comes to like our. Uh, uh, we did tuck point in engine 15, and this was a, an argued conversation over over a, a phone call, a, a group phone call. <clears throat> the agency who wrote the uh, 
contract for our mason work, well, they didn't specify the cost of scaffolding. They didn't specify the uh, charge, you know, the, the allowable charges. So for us, the we had our um, tuck pointing done at 15s. The scaffolding cost was like uh, $5,000 a month, you know, and like, we're, we're not paying $5,000 a month for scaffolding. We can buy that scaffolding for you know, less than $1,000. You can buy that scaffolding. Uh, argued this, contested it. Well, that's the way the contracts bid, that they can set the price. So from there, that was our last tuck point job, right? Now we're moving on to put it out to bid. We're not, we're not going that route again. Uh, but that was, I mean, that's a free $5,000 for this company. They, it's their scaffolding, you know, it's their, um, but then they go into the price of the mortar and, and they're allowable for upcharges and things. So that's one example of uh, when we write a contract, we write it for us. <clears throat> These other companies, other agencies, when they write a contract, if they write a generic, it allows for a lot of room, but because we, our by contract for Louisville Metro, that's what you have to fall under. Uh, sealed bids, we put things out to bid, we'll score them. We, we write for our specs, we write, <clears throat> we get, we scored based on that packet. So if we want uh, references, if we want types of jobs that line up to ours, we'll go through there and score each person. Um, we don't see the price. OMB holds the price. They do the percentage score of that. Um, we submit our scoring and that's how a bid is awarded. And then from there, we'll meet with the vendor, contractor, and we'll, uh, we'll sign it and then we'll go into the purchasing process. But that's how sealed bid takes place. Uh, it's run through Bonfire. We don't see, we don't see the price, so I know uh, we've all felt, I felt like it, that shoot, we're just going off the cheapest vendor. We don't, I don't see the price when I'm bidding or when I'm uh, scoring these bids. Price comes into play. Oftentimes, you know, uh, based on the percentage of the scoring, the, the lowest bid more than likely is going to win the bid, but that's not a factor on our scoring. Our factor is, how does this match up to our uh, project? <clears throat> these are limitations. Like I say, don't get caught up in these numbers. Um, this is just the process. Um, and I, w I really want to convey to you all of why some of our decisions are made. Um, we got spending limits before it goes out to <clears throat> before it switches to a contract, and then we got competitive bid when it gets, when it exceeds a certain dollar amount. All right, grants. Uh, assistance firefighter grant, that's a big one that I use. Uh, since 2015, like I, I've been involved with the sprinkler grant and the washer dryer grant, that's what uh, Colonel Ford had written for. We were awarded, I just helped manage those. Since then, uh, we've gotten written for the mobile radios, the transceivers, and the accountability system. Uh, that was purchased on a grant. Um, right now, I've submitted for, it hadn't been awarded or denied yet, for mobile radios for the apparatus. So. With the washer and dryer, sprinkler, uh, transceivers, and accountability, that's just under $2 million um, that we've been awarded through grants. Our grants come with uh, a 10% match with AFG, so we have to spend out money, but that's a great return. 10% out to get 90%. Uh, thing with grants, and the reason why the cost is up there, or not cost, but the uh, purchase sizes up there, grants are quite a bit of work. It's a lot of work to put together. 
but once you receive it, there's a lot of work to maintain. Like um, if you look on your washer and dryers, it has a tag on it, purchased with this grant. Um, when Cliff comes by and does maintenance on it, he's got to chart that, and he's got to document that the washer and dryer is still here. Um, this, you know, we're keeping track of it. You couldn't just dispose of it. It has to go through an approval process, uh, back to AFG to get rid of it. On your new radios, if you take the battery off, there's a small sticker inside of there that says purchase with AFG grant. Uh, we got to track all that. So with the grants, they come with work and, and it's long term. So for me, I tend not to look for five and $10,000 grants. I'm looking for something that's going to be uh, beneficial to the fire department and be worth our time to manage. Homeland Security, Port Security, Major Jones really gets involved in this. That's where he gets dive gear from, swift water gear. Um, he wrote a grant for and paid for half of the new fire boat. The insurance paid for half and he wrote a grant. Um, he got $600,000 for to pay the balance of the fire boat. So that's like $1.1 $1 .1 million boat, um, 500,000 we had for insurance uh, from when the other one was sunk. <clears throat> but with the port security, he, he also will write for uh, meters, gas meters, uh, helmets for dive, swift water, different suits. So that's where a lot of his funding comes from. His tend to be a little more expensive on the match. I think he's got a 25% match on his. Um, but this is, this is another source of funding that that's the only way we can afford to make these purchases. Like we, our radios are $750,000. We don't have any line item in our budget that would pay for radios. So that's why uh, we write for the grants and that's how we get that. Uh, the accountability system is $700,000. We don't and we, we wouldn't be able to do this without uh, these grants. Do we, do we ask for funding when it came to like the drones or is that a line item that we... The, like with the drones and the TVs? Uh, those are purchased out of uh, training, technology, different areas. Um, we haven't come across a grant that would provide them yet. But. You hear about like the safer grants that other big cities get where they'll hire like I know it comes with crazy stipulations and stuff but is that why they've never taken a safer grant well the safer grant is uh, uh like shepherdsville just got one <clears throat> safer grant when you read over it it's to replace positions that's been lost and it's for a temporary window like they'll pay your salary for a year and a half um, i think that's what they did at the tunnel when they did the uh the bridge project, that was a form of safer grant. Once that period was over, then you either have to let those folks go or a, another funding source has to be in place. Um, we haven't applied for a safer grant. I mean, I don't know um, outside of like when we closed engine 11, we hadn't lost positions for a period of time. And I think that's the basis of the SAFER grant to replenish positions or to uh, temporar temporarily build you up. So uh, we I haven't used them. I've read over a few times and it didn't feel like, I wasn't 100% sure if we qualify for that or not. Um, Chief, right now, he just sent me something last week about um, the state doing a uh, facilities grant for training. So we're looking at that to see if we can make improvements to the training tower. Submit for something, uh, what kind of improvements we can make for the tower. That'd be completely different than the burn building. Fire prevention was awarded a grant uh, and it was through the AFG for um, a program for vacant buildings. Excuse me. Um, they had smoke detectors put in vacant buildings, solar powered, uh, a battery backup, <clears throat> early detection. That signal went out, is monitored just like a full device. We 
rewarded the grant. The company that initially presented the project went under. So there wasn't anybody else. We, we shopped all around. Nobody else uh, could do it. Nobody, there wasn't anybody else around here that provided that. Um, the grants, same thing. They're written for this purpose. You make an appeal to AFG, say, hey, can we make this amendment? Uh, we wasn't awarded, I mean, we was awarded this, but the company went under. Can we reallocate these fundings here? And that's a ruling that they have to weigh in on. Uh, so we ultimately, that's $400,000, we ultimately just denied taking acceptance of the war, uh, of the grant. Uh, we didn't have any, anybody to successfully put that into play. Um, but grants are a great source of, of picking up some things that you wouldn't be able to afford. Uh, the capital plan. So we're looking at strategic plan. We're looking at long term. Uh, you know, we got right now goals. We got mid mid range goals. We got long term. Uh, that's where the capital plan comes into play. Um, what are we going to buy? What do we have coming up? What's construction? Every year, in our capital project based on uh, the age of our buildings we put in. We we need new facilities. We need a new fire station, and that's, you know, we submit it every year. This year, like I say, the, uh, this is the first year they've asked for a deferred maintenance cost. They've asked for, so in that same language, you know, I, I try to press on them, uh, uh, like their, their plan. So when I did a description of what our deferred maintenance was, I included the age of our facilities. I included that our buildings, the importance of the age of them, they were built for men. They were built 40 years ago, there wasn't any women in the fire department. 100 years ago, no, there wasn't any. So when we're looking at equality, when we're looking at uh, uh, fairness and things, a portion of our buildings have been renovated to have female dorms, but when the ones that that we've renovated without the uh, Jack and Jill dorm style, you can make a case that that closet right there is now a women's dorm. You know, we, we've made office building or office space a woman's dorm. That's not, that, that equality, you know, that, that doesn't match up to the men's side. We have uh, religious reasons. Some people may want to be off on their own. They don't have a place to, to do what they do on their own. Uh, Eventually, we're, we're going to come across a transgender in our department. Uh, I just feel like that's coming. Um, all these things. So when I put in our language, our buildings were built that six to eight people can take a shower one time. Our, our locker rooms are wide open like this. Everybody's openly dressed. Our dormitories are open that when somebody gets up, you know, there's nine people in the room. It's, we need to make these improvements. And these are kind of the cases that we make uh, when we're arguing over, over our facilities, when we're really pressing, we want, we want uh, to build, we want to look at the, the whole system, uh, make this improvement. Uh, our buildings when we built 100 years ago didn't have diesel exhaust in them. You know, our folks now are eating, some of our houses are eating basically in a garage. Uh, you're eating dinner right next to the apparatus that just backed in. Uh, you make all these cases for cancer awareness, for uh, health awareness, you know. Uh, all these things are put into our budget, into our argument to upgrade our facilities. So, I talked to the last two classes. Uh, where assistance comes in from you, where support comes in. Get to know your council folks. Have them at your house for lunches. Have them, they more than likely aren't gonna invite themselves. Uh, when, when you talk to them and you hear, they'll, they'll go to office buildings. They'll, they'll feel more welcome in the office buildings because that's a eight to four 
kind of routine. They look at, at our fire stations as, well, that's your place where you're living. I don't know what you're doing right now. I don't know. So invite them in to lunch. Let them feel welcome. Show them your facilities. Talk about your concerns. Talk about uh, different things in the community that you have them help with. You know, uh, bend their ear a little bit. But get to know them. That goes a long way in the budget process. They're, they're, they're the ultimate approver or denier of the budget, right? So uh, on our side, we're putting forth all these arguments to to improve our facilities, improve our apparatus. Uh, we put the NFPA standards, uh, age of apparatus, condition. We list all of our mileage. We list uh, the amount of runs we make. We take in, you know, we build a case on what our costs are. Uh, so we're asking for the money. On your all side, you can support it by going through the council. And then it's approached on both sides. So. Uh, when you're looking at your capital, when you're looking at our budget, we're, again, we're looking at right now what we have to do, uh, long range, and this is all fluid, right? We, we didn't have truck two in line to do multiple, you know, $400,000 worth of work there. Uh, this is all fluid. Things come up, things change. So, but long-term planning, this is what the budget does for you. Uh, the outdated equipment, what we talked about, uh, Colonel Crony breaks it down. He's got a list that he supplies. He says we're nine apparatus behind. Right now they're in Wisconsin at Seagrave. 17 should be coming back in the next uh, month or so. They're going to order an engine and an aerial. So there's three of our nine. But next year we're going to be another one that's going to take one of those places. You know, we're on this rotation. So he's, he's listening what their uh, ages are, what their conditions are, using the NFPA standards to say, you know, you've got this amount of time to use this equipment. The improved response. Things that we take up an argument with, uh, you know, we challenge all of our companies to watch your response times. Improve your response times. We want you out of the house. We want you out of the door. But on our side, when we go uh, to take up these arguments and answer for what our performance is, we challenge, like, where well, you're putting in a median that's 8 to 10 inches tall. Where's the car going to go? Where there's no way fire press can get around. You're moving one-way streets to two-way streets. That's causing us congestion. Archtown Road went from four lanes to two lanes with parking curbs basically on the side. There's nowhere. So we take up these kind of arguments uh, that, that we're, we're trying to make the improved response. I feel like you're working against us here. So that's where we, we then go into build this new fire station and move from here to here. We can show you this heat map to show this is where our responses are. That puts us closer to this area. We're using all the uh, tools we can. That's, that's justification. No, that, that, that's a challenging word to me, but to better improve our chances of uh, getting something. So these are, I, I want to just give you all the information I can give you of how we're asking, what we're asking, things like that. Um, that's our replacement plan. Like I said, he knows what the next nine apparatus are that we're going to replace. The expected cost, we know $31 million in deferred maintenance. The next five or six years, we know what houses we'd like to do, what we would like to do in them. Uh, so this is our planning. Yep. Is there a feeling, uh, Chief Staff, that we're kind of in trouble with apparatus? Because you'll, you'll go to change over and you have, it's challenging to find a auxiliary engine sometimes. It is. It, it's so on the aerial side, we feel pretty comfortable. Like we're, we're pretty decent. On the pumper side, yeah, we have to get, we have to get these going. A uh, big concern is we got our three hazmat pumpers coming up. Uh, there's been a ton of conversation. What do you do for them? Do you 
replace them with three more hazmat pumpers with the, the uh, foam agent. Do we go to a foam trailer? Um, Cause they're going to be, I mean, they're going to be more expensive with the foam, you know? So there's a ton of conversation of what are we going to do? How are we going to replace them? Um, but that's part of the argument of the sooner we can get the front line to an auxiliary, that's going to take us out another 10 years on that piece. Uh, so yeah, it, it's always concern, you know. Now the age of our apparatus, as an average, with the AFG, so AFG grants, we don't qualify because our apparatus are new enough on average that we won't qualify for, to apply for a grant um, to get new apparatus. So, in that sense based upon, and, and you know, that's a, a national, they're exposed nationally. Um, based upon that, we may be in decent shape as a country, you know what I mean? But for us, no, you're not in a comfortable zone. Um, when truck three was hit, that, that was a, uh, when truck three was totaled out, that really set us back pretty decent for a, a decent amount of time. We don't have any other auxiliaries now, you know what I mean? So uh, it took uh, a couple years to get back to comfortable on that. So yeah, these are all things that are thought about in the, the plan. Um, changes your priorities of, of purchasing. So. How long are we gonna keep them? You know, we try to go off NFPA and we've stretched that out on a few of our pumpers. This here is just like a generic version of, uh, or a generic example of what a, uh, a replacement plan looks like. This is the age of it, this is the cost of it, this is the life expectancy. Um, when we put new, new equipment on here, this is what the cost would be. So we're pushing this out. And again, uh, this changes, right? So when truck three got hit, instead of buying another engine, we had to, you had to go to an aerial. Uh, now with that, we did make a, a, a petition with uh, Louisville Metro, and I think there was some uh, extra funding going into the next capital project to where we got two apparatus. Uh, we've never been hit by a person with insurance. I mean, truck three is totaled out, and that person didn't have a lick of insurance. So the chief, he always makes a joke about somebody hit 20s, and they're set up on this payment plan that goes out nearly 100 years. Like by the time they pay it off, it's $10 a day, $10 a month for 100 years or something. So uh, to my knowledge, I don't think we've ever been hit by somebody with insurance. We, we, and that comes back to us. That, that's another maintenance, that's another expense that, that we eat. So. so does Major Downs, like you're in charge of a bunch of, do you like delegate this kind of stuff and he sends it to you and then you formulate it type? Right, so each of us are, I'm over the overall budget, but uh, Crony oversees like training, the shop, and they'll report to him and then me and him work together on the expense. Um, Colonel Muir oversees arson and fire prevention. Um, I'll work with him and he'll oversee that and, and they stay in bounds of their spending. Uh, but they don't come to me to say, hey, can I buy this or this and that, you know, that, that's yours, don't overspend it. Uh, they manage their own stuff. Just at the end of the year, I'll, I'll look at their budget and I'll say, <clears throat> look, you, you got, $12,000 in tires. Are you planning on spending that out or are you going to put it towards something else? He'll tell me his plan, you know, he's like, no, we're going to zero, but uh, so I, I'll just kind of get with them to maintain if, uh, like Muir, one year we he had money left over in uh, uh, public safety or something. Uh, and we took money out of that and we bought one of the drones with it. Like, 
you, you, you know, we're coming to the end of the fiscal year. If you, if you don't have a hard uh, plan for that, we had, we want a drone. So, uh, so we'll go through and shuffle money like that. But so everything has to be zero, like on that side of it. But then, the, uh, like the PPO overtime and all that overtime, can you go to the city and request more money, or how does that, that work? So I mean, we we tell them, we tell them. This is how many hours of PPO over time we've had. This is how many members who used it. it. All that's detailed, you know. And so our overtime budget, if you look at our budget, we went from 887000 to $4.5 million in our unscheduled overtime. Um, but our department uses PPO more than most, right? We're... we're uh, 20s to 30 year old body. Uh, I mean, that, that's the bulk of our department, right? So we use the age frame. Yeah, that's years. where you're having. That's where you since you said PPO. What's the current like? Since we're starting to see what cost that is on departments, police, fire, and all that. What's the thought climate at the city level? Uh, starting to like think, hey, this was a bad decision. No, they haven't backed off of it. I mean. I haven't given us any indication that we're going to stop it. What about department heads bringing them up as, hey, this is well, something we're going to need to address? It up. So that, given our, all of our data on it, that's, that's helped going from 800000 to $4.5 in our unscheduled overtime. Um, I mean, that, for us, we're like, that's killing us. That we're, we're allowing 10 to 12 people a year off for quarter of the year. Like that's, so it, it's playing on two more. I got like fucking See, ten. I got ten minutes right? for all my kids. That's amazing. Yeah. I wish yeah. I all the time. Uh, I, I believe, you know, for Metro government, I think that's one of the, the uh, you're in this competitive workforce, right? That's one of the things they can utilize against the private sector. They're not going to match money with them. So so it looks like a benefit. It looks like a benefit. Um, you know, turnover on the, the financial side, that's a, that is strictly a two or three year and out. Okay, I have, I'm an accountant. I go to work here. I've got this couple years of experience. Now I can go to a private sector and triple my money. I can go. Um, so I think this is a, a way to help combat the workforce. I don't see any reason for them to back off of it, you know. Uh, but it is expensive. It is. But that money doesn't come like. That's part of the eighty-three million dollars. So it's built in. Mm -hmm. Even that three million dollar increase it seems like that. You, if everything's so tight as it is, you're talking about twelve thousand dollars for tires from here. We're going to take here. You're talking about adding three or four million dollars. Well, How does that? So you you can't take twelve thousand dollars for the tires. To put it into personnel, that you can't cross. You said there's an increase in unscheduled overtime. It's, it's an increase in unscheduled overtime, right? And that's out of our personnel. So that's part of the the 78 million dollars. You know, of the 83, that's where all of our wages, all our benefits, any non-scheduled overtime. Uh, so non-scheduled overtime, uh, the two years we had COVID. I mean. Shoot, we had five something hundred thousand dollars worth of overtime for COVID. You know, PPL, we know this many people is using it. This is how many hours we can project the cost to it. Uh, but PPL is expensive. It, uh, so these are things that, that, like they just say, all right, we're going to do PPL. That wasn't in our original budget, right? That's like, well, how are we going to pay for it? They had no idea what the the end result was going to be, right? They, I'm sure somebody like well, that probably cost us. But when when you talk to them and they seen that right out of the gate we utilized it, and immediately, you know, we had guys take off for a week because I got a week left in my six months. I'm, uh, but then first chance, and. and of course, they, they're blind optimism, right? Like, do you think they're going to take the whole three months, or you think they'll just do? 
Well, it's your ass. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, my thoughts are we'll see them in a, in a few months. So, uh, they they didn't know, they they didn't know, they didn't take it into consideration that we're a twenty or thirty year old apartment, and that's what we're doing. We're having babies. So, what is uh, all this screwed up pay going to do to the budget? You know, Man, all these lower payments and I swear. Cause that's got to be bad. Sort it out. I mean, I guess that's not on y'all. It's nothing. Well, we're doing. It's no, it, it's thank soon. goodness, you know, like and and that's that's uh, an often conversation I had with Susan when she like, can I can I go and help them do this or that? And I'm like, no, no. Right now, this isn't our. Oh, yeah. This isn't. We're not the cause of this. We we don't have any blame in this. We're on the receiving end of, of, of wrongness, but uh, no, we're, we, so I encourage you, if your checks are still wrong, or if you've not been made right, rewrite your letters. Like, so those we continue to send to say, this wrong problem still exists, this problem still exists. Uh, we're, we're, we haven't had a, a correct pay cycle since October when this went into play. Not one, not one pay since October has been correct. So write your letters, get that stuff in, and, and we're sending it on down the line. Uh, but as far as making that right, like, uh, you know, the, I think there's five people, Chief, Hubri, a couple other folks you may know, uh, they started taking Social Security out of there out of their check, you know. So I don't know what that does to their W-2s. It, I don't think they've been fixed for 2022's income, you know. Uh, so I, I don't know when they receive that money back. I haven't been a part of uh, the restoration of that, but for them, I'm sure it's frustrating. I'm like, shoot, I, I need to do my taxes. You got my stuff all jammed up here. So since October, they started getting a uh, percentage taken out of their check. They've never had before. Workday is a flat out mess. Uh, There's one pay period, the zoo, another person from the zoo got a paycheck. Right. I mean, everybody at the zoo got zero that day on their pay. It's, and it's so inconsistent, right? It, it's, uh, so that's why for me, I've, I've I've been coaching Susan stay out of the solution side of it. Don't don't insert the fire department into that. So it, I guess my only question on that is it is it's a software issue, right? It, it is. It isn't personnel putting in numbers. Issue. No, no, it, it's not. It's a software. Yes. It's a math problem. It is it's the writing problem somehow, but every every time every time a change takes place. It's affecting something else over here. That's why we're so inconsistent. And like, I just don't understand how other cities. This isn't new. Well, it's not new. It's new to us. But but somebody the other day in our staff meeting was saying they were somewhere. They talked to somebody, and they were like, "Hey, these bugs that Workday keeps talking about are more like roaches. They don't ever go away." There, these other cities who has this has been having the same trouble. We're, we were supposed to go live with Telestaff last year. Telestaff's like, we're not engaging right here because right now, you know, you already have enough trouble. Uh, if we introduce our, what's that going to do to the connection here? Because they have to connect to one another, right? We're doing this scheduling here, and then pays, it pushes over to your pay here. Your pay's already jacked. Your pay's already jacked up. If we introduce something else that connects here, that integrates, what is that going to do to this whole system? So that's why we're not on telestaff. That's why uh, we stay with Image Trend on our scheduling. Uh, they was trying to get away from scheduling, right? So now uh, they kept us on, kept us on. We kept saying telestaff's coming. I'm like, we can't keep them. So that's why we transitioned to roster. Um, the, the, I mean, this whole domino effect, 
this area work day is not working. All the staff can't do what they want to do. The image trim wanted to move away and, and they couldn't do it. And so now here we are trying to, we're, we're caught in the middle of it. We're carbon paper, fall ourselves. I, I'm telling you, <laughs> people laugh when I say it, but like I take my notes, I, I don't use the iPad. I, I got notepads of, of notes and like, this is never disappointing. This is, uh, when I did my interview for this position with the mayor, he's tech driven. He, I mean, as, as most people are nowadays, they're tech driven. I, I like, you know, that's not my gift. But my, in my interview, I explained to him the fire department is built on redundancy. You know, we, we take a saw to the roof, we take an axe to the roof. We have one radio, we got a cell phone to, to if the radio goes out, we got an apparatus radio, we got these redundant. I was like, for me, the biggest threat that's talked about in, in city is what if we get ransomware? What if they shut us down? I was like, the fire department's only a year or two away from handwriting our fuel. We can go right back. So I've got a binder of all of our hard copies. We can go back to handwriting, subtracting our fuel. We, we won't be shut down, right? We can take the computer system out of play. Uh, other agencies aren't like it. Other, like for us, we're, we're built on this, this practicality, right? The iPad is great when it's working. If it's not working all the time, it's useless, right? It, if, if it's not going to always tell me which way to go, I just assume it not ever tell me which way to go. I don't want to get in on that dependency. So, uh, I know we're going down rabbit holes, but, you know, these are, these, this is, this is my take on it. Like, I'm, I'm not a tech guy. I'm not uh, uh, secure in it, I guess. I don't know. But technology, Chief is. Chief is, he's tech, tech, tech. That's the apparatus phones now. So long-term planning, uh, he, he came in, he's like, I want cell phones on the apparatus. Uh, well, I'm the budget guy, right? So I'm like, I don't like that idea. I don't, for me, that's costing us, it's $50 a phone. Uh, iPad's $50 a month, the phone's $50 a month. Anything we have for the, the cellular plan, $50 a month. I'm like, that's $14,000. I, I don't, don't want to do it. We don't have it. We'll find it. I'll, you know, make that happen. So, his argument was the safety of security of all the captains and personnel and apparatus. Uh, you know, for us, we know if you use your phone, you take pictures on the scene, or if you do business on the scene, uh, on any incident, your phone is discoverable. Your phone, like if an open records request comes in, uh, they can take your phone. They can, as it is, they just take it. Um, you don't get a chance to download everything. You don't get a chance to they just take your phone. Um, Whatever's on it now is discoverable. If you got stuff you don't want anybody else to see, it's discoverable. So he's like, put cell phones on the apparatus. Let contact, Metro Safe can contact them. Uh, folks don't have to use their own cell phone. If radios go out by some crazy reason, there's a voice contact. All right, so that's the reason why we have cell phones on the apparatus. That you make a case we don't need them, we have our own, but that's the argument against using your own. Uh, it, it's in place as a protection for uh, each, uh, each person on the apparatus. Uh, we went to the bidding process, getting back to here. Uh, we draw up our specs and we draw them up. For a, a bid, we draw them up very specific. Um, we want you know, we want to get them out to the vendors. We want to get uh, we we want to get a lot of input. I mean, that's what you're hoping on. Then it gets competitive in your pricing. But specific on the apparatus side, with uh, our our specs, we specifically write in there a we want a stainless steel cab. Seagrave is 
your leader in stainless steel. Um, there's some others who are starting to progress that way a little bit, but that's how we really lock down a Seagraves contract and you get away from the cheapest vendor. Uh, when you look at the cost, Seagrave and engines about just under a million dollars now, like 940 or so. These other apparatus, they may run six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollars. Uh, we're going with the, the quality that we want this apparatus to last, or once to last 25, 30 years. We've seen how truck three was just beat to pieces down there, uh, and everybody got out and treated somebody else, you know what I mean? So uh, the safety of it, we stand on that. It costs a lot more money, but that's a specific thing that we put into the bid. Uh, putting it out there, checking your vendors. An RFP is request for uh, uh, a product. We use RFI like request for information. So <clears throat> if you don't know what is out there, if you don't know, I, I, I want to buy anything, but I don't know, uh, like I, I want to buy the, the transceiver. When we bought the transceiver, I put out an RFI, what all is capable of nowadays transceiver. We're going from something that uh, essentially is going to be a paperweight to what is available. So we get four or five vendors come in and Motorola, you know, they have this man down feature. They have uh, the connectivity to we talk to Jeffersonville, New Albany, uh, Oldham. It matches up to our current radio system. Uh, it does these different features. Kenwood comes in and they're like, this is what our radio does. It does these different things. Uh, we didn't know what was even available. So we couldn't write a spec until, until we see what's there. Once we get that, then you can write like, man, that's nice. I'd like to have all these things. And then that goes out to your bid. Um, so some, if you know exactly what you want, you can write your spec right out of the gate. For us, we had to write for information. We had to get some vendors coming in. That's what the bid, RFP, like I said, ours RFI. Uh, so, kind of getting into the summary, you know, uh, uh, the budget process that's used to, to drive, you know, support your mission, not drive your mission, but used to support your mission. You're setting up your long-term goals, long-term planning. Um, you know where to make adjustments uh, in, in apparatus and facilities, and I use those because those are two big spending areas. But uh, what to obtain, what the future is going to look like. But down at the bottom, it's got personal purchase for apparatus or refurbish. Uh, we tend not to refurbish. Uh, you know, everyone has has preferences. Everyone has. Uh, likes and dislikes. Uh, currently, the chief's preference is not to, to, to make a 20-year-old apparatus your first frontline apparatus because it looks new. It's, you know, let's use it for its purpose of an auxiliary and let's buy new. Uh, so that, that's his preference and that's the model we operate under. Again, our funding comes from taxes. Uh, Borrow money. The fire department doesn't borrow money. Um, Louisville Metro government puts out bonds. They and that's what helps pay for the capital projects. But we're not carrying loans. Um, so uh, for us, it, it talks about speaking to the public. All of our, you know, all of our things are discovered. <laughs> Everything's open record. Uh, we show what type of runs we make. We show uh, how many runs we make. We, we talk about, you know, to the public and to the local metro government, in support of, of our asks, we're talking about, like, we make 47,000 runs. That's, that's a lot of runs. But we go to say we make 70,000 
responses, right? So uh, we made 47,000 incidents, but on those incidents, we got 70,000 responses. You get a box, you get six companies, seven with the battalion. Uh, so that's where we get into our impact on the community. That's where we get into the importance of uh, the apparatus, the importance of station location. Uh, when we're explaining our response times, when we're explaining our performances. Last week, two weeks ago, I guess now, Engine 17 and Engine 20 was on an initial box down on Brook Street. That, that I don't know if it's ever taken place, right? Every day now is su uh, subject to us being like a storm day, where, where our companies start getting way out of line um, with the new CAD. Engine 9 was being first in on Dosker. So we spent a couple hours down there working on um, how to get away from that, right? That's great for Engine 5, they, they drop off 600 runs. But when you look at our mapping, Engine 9 coming seven blocks north 600 times a year, our Engine 9 is our fourth engine out southeast now. Somebody's gonna have to take place of Engine 9 there. So is it gonna be Engine 5's gonna go out there or 16's or we start getting ourselves out of. So these are all things that, that come into play in our arguments for uh, funding and you know in, in support of of relocating our houses, uh, adding houses. Um, we 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 had a conversation with the new high rises going out Lexington and Grinstead. We need to we need to put more apparatus out there. We need to put more bodies out there. Um, we're going to the plus one. You know we're three to one ratio of we're going out versus them coming in. All these things are talked about, the, the, the extra cost on apparatus, extra cost on fuel, the maintenance on our apparatus, uh, how it gets us out of, out of alignment with our current deployment. Uh, so these are all things that, that are put on the table uh, that I'm letting you all know so for clarity really and for informational purposes uh, this is what the staff is talking about when it comes to budget time there's things that come into play conversation when it comes to our decision making of of who's where what's where things like that so uh, long range goals you're always looking out long range right you always have to keep something that you're chasing So this here is getting close to the end. If not, there's one more. But um, justify your expense again. That we we try to offer up our value. We try to to support our request more than justifying. The fire department when it says expense, that's what the fire department is, right? We we are 100 percent cost. Uh, we don't bring any money back into the city. We don't. So when, when uh, we're making our argument, we're making our case for funding, it's with that understanding, like the only thing that the fire department does is costing money, right? So now uh, another thing that we're, we're trying to look at, and Major Feckney has been really involved in that, is a, we report out a cost uh, of, of associated with a building fire, structure fire. Uh, this is how much damage was, this is how much. So he's working with this program that he run into somebody uh, at a, an accreditation meeting. It is a cost savings, so like, you make structure fire, it, it may have been $40,000 in damage, but what's the cost savings? If the exposure you know, wasn't involved, did you keep this person in the community? Did, were they able to go to work and, and all these intangibles that come with it, did they, did they move their tax to another? 
their house was saved, how much property was saved there. Um, as a business fire, you know, uh, how much money is saved during a business fire. So that's making it look like, you know, we're, we're on this cost savings versus this is how much damage uh, occurred dur during our incidents. We're looking at, well, let's put the fire department to how much money did the fire department save the city. So he's looking at, at uh, software for that. I mean, and that's early stages. Um, so every way we can to present uh, of this is our performance, this is what we provide, this is the importance of the fire department. Uh, here, running the fire department, you know, it's intensive operation. Uh, your preferences 100% aren't going to align with uh, everyone else's preferences. Like for me, like I say, I, I oversee the budget, I manage it. My preference was not to spend 14000 on cell phones. Chief's preference was to do it. Uh, he has preferences though that, that in discussion, one, one thing he does, he allows us to give a case. He has preferences. We'll discuss it and uh, if he sees our side, we'll go that route. If he's set on something, we'll, we'll go his route. His preference was to have a generator at 16s. He feels like during any kind of event, uh, we have to have the shop open, right? I mean, we have to have the shop open. So now the shop's on backup generator. If we're down for, for a week without power in Louisville, shop's open. Uh, that's what we've always been vulnerable to that. This here is our backup headquarters. If headquarters floods for some reason, you know, a river comes up, headquarters floods, this place designated as our backup headquarters, but it's not equipped with a generator. It doesn't, it doesn't have that, so we're vulnerable there. Uh, things that he thinks about is like uh, <coughs> the fuel pump at Tower 2. Tower 2, every single day comes to headquarters to get fuel. So now, you kept them in their area for that 20 minutes a day. Like, they're able to stay there. Um, so those are things that he's thinking about. Like that, that costs us $100,000. But long term, uh, that keeps them here. They're gonna respond this many runs. There's days where they get fuel twice a day. They stay right there. Uh, 21s, it's closer now. So these are all things that he thinks about. But they're all open discussion. Uh, that's long-term planning. That's uh, he, he's looking at the whole of things. Yesterday, somebody brought up about a um, individual, like this. This is what I would like right here. Like, well, you've satisfied you, right? Well, we've got 21 stations times three. We've got 26 companies times three. And all are connected. All are dependent on one another, and it's his job to oversee that. So some of the decisions that are made, you, you don't agree with, I don't agree with. He throws out plans though that I throw out plans that he necessarily doesn't agree with, but he'll go with them uh, because it's for the, the betterment. So those are, those are factors in decision making. Those are, you know, today, uh, this is how the budget's set up. This is the process that we run by. <clears throat> but more importantly, I wanted to I want you to leave here today with the application of it, with a, a practical understanding of it and, and how you come into play. Uh, the year-end reviews, those, those are uh, put into a file and they're prioritized and that goes into projecting our spending. That goes into, we look at that and we say, this house, the windows don't work, you know, well, let, let's prioritize this to, move it up from eight here to, to three and our next window project this is who we're going to look at how much concrete damage uh, you know when we come up with uh, at the end of the year we get if we can find ten thousand dollars you know we, we replace some of the concrete at 16s just to that concrete is horrible it's four inch drops let's let's uh we can be in and out of there in a week like i said june 30th is our cutoff you have to you have to be done 
have to have things on site, paid. So in and out in a week, we can hit a concrete job. Let throw 10,000, big improvement. So those things come into play though. Those are uh, uh, looked at and those help <coughs> prioritize what our spending is long-term. That's, that's the application side for your current position. And, and when you're promoted, when you're in the houses, don't just pass through, you know, look, look and see. When, when <coughs> you receive the reviews, go house to house and go over them. Make sure they're thorough. Make sure they're not a duplicate from things that's been repaired. So uh, that's the practical side. So, but now, any questions y'all have that uh, have any more questions or uh, you'd like further explanation on anything? I think I understand it correctly when you're talking about like uh, truck three when it got in a wreck. But let's just use it. Everybody always throughout. My fire department career has always said we're self-insured. That's their advice, they're self-insured. Right. That, the definition of that is just if we, something happens to one of our vehicles, we have to buy another one. Like a, a service truck goes out today and gets totaled, too bad, we just have to buy another one. We don't have any insurance carrier, insurance policy, auto insurance. Right. That, so the city of Louisville is self-insured, right? Not Louisville Fire. Uh, so for Louisville Fire, our truck was totaled we have a $100,000 deductible. The fire department does to the city of Louisville's self-insured. So we total out a, a pickup truck. We're not gonna turn that in on insurance. We buy a new pickup truck for 30,000. Uh, but truck three's totaled out. They reallocate funds uh, this year instead of buying one apparatus, you buy two. That's that's the self-insured part. Um, the roof damage at engine one, uh, it's cheaper for us to fix it than to go through the self-insured. So, Regardless of what it is, it's a $100,000 deductible? For apparatus. For apparatus. Yeah. So. I, got, I got a question about, so when a city comes out and to the, all the departments and says, hey, I need you to cut this amount off your budget, whatever it is. They don't also provide the solution of how you're going to do it, right? So our administration goes back and says, we have to cut this much. How are we going to do it? So that's discussed internally, right? Right. Now, I will say the year that we close Engine 11, they come out and said, engine, we want to close Engine 1. Now. That's based on eight years ago or something that in in one conversation that hey, if he was gonna close firehouse, which one would be? Engine well, one makes seven hundred runs eight years ago, you know. Uh, that may be on the block or so they come out and they're like they didn't give a a, a reason outside of that that outside of what was discussed one time before what would you say close engine one? <clears throat> so from there you know, we made the decision, engine one's not good to close it. So, uh, I, I'm not sure if y'all remember, but when that took place, Delaney came to 40 hour for uh, a month or two months. So for three weeks, me, him, uh, uh, Axon set in on it, Crony set in on some of them. Uh, we brought other car fives in on daily, but for, for three weeks, and I and Bill Williams ran reports. We, we all these scenarios in Deccan that, that shows uh, our response times. Plug engine one out, what does that do to all of our response times? You, you make all these companies quints, like make truck four inch 22 a quint, what would that do to our response time? Make quint seven a quint. If, if you went to truck two, inch five, made that a quint. If you pulled any of these companies, we went through every single company, pulled them, reconfigured them, but for three weeks we went through that. And ultimately, uh, settling on engine 11 was the least impact. Like uh, total, they made just over 2,000 runs together. Um, uh, 
So right down the street, you know, you got engine five making 5,000 runs. Over here, you got engine nine making 4,000, approaching 5,000 now. But together, both companies made just over two. So you're looking like, man, as far as coverage goes, we're, we're still pretty decent shape. Um, we've got engines that surround it. Point seven itself still can make medical runs. Uh, they still keep an aerial there. So that's ultimately how we decided on point seven. Uh, you kind of knew where I was heading here, I guess. Well, no, that is exactly where I was heading. The closing of houses I and mean, how that's how that's using heat maps and, and all these things response times mm -hmm. to figure out what. In my time frame, you know, we got engine 19. They was truck five. You know, yeah. truck eight, engine 10 was under threat for a long time. Uh, yeah, 27, they, they 29, before that, that time. 10 before that. My question is like, and now since then we've added responses outside of the urban district. We've added a fourth engine to boxes. Mm -hmm. uh, the CAD systems wreaked havoc. We're already making more and more runs every year and it, with no nothing in sight of it ever declining that's right. your reason it will yeah so i guess my answer is or my question is like first i'm not a quint fan everybody knows that, that talks to me and i don't think generally anybody is it's an answer to a problem it isn't a great one it isn't even a good one you know but it seems like that's where we always land it's like you know we close a company, we make it a quint, and we settle with that. And we're talking about budgets. Is there, and we're talking about projecting a budget. Is there anything in the future where it's like, hey, we need to add a company? You just mentioned a high rise going out, we need to add companies. But we're talking about this is effect, not, that's a new thing, right? right? I'm talking about existing problems. You know, is there anything in the budget where it's like not moving houses, not building a new house for a house that exists? But I'm talking about a new house, new company, we're putting an engine back out on track where there's now a quint and making right. a truck. Is that, I'm sure it's talked about, but yeah, is there any talk real, about So I, I, I explain as clear as I can. <clears throat> what we run into is the success of our performance, honestly. So like I talked about, when, and, and this is, the chief's guidance. This last time we had nine people put back onto the quints. That, that was, we got people back. And he sat with the union leadership and was like, don't go asking for engine 11. We haven't had success in restoring these companies, right? When you look at the data, we didn't drop off in our performance of that area. Our run times are still good in that area, our response times. It's going to be hard to support getting that company back. But if you support the function of the quint that you need these bodies, that's easier to, so you get nine of the 15 back. Uh, but our performance, ultimately our performance is what gets us. Because we, we're, we went from 8,000 runs to 47,000. You know, somebody the other day is like, man, our runs are doubled. Our runs are not doubled. Our, in the 90s, we went from 8,000 to uh, 47,000 runs. Uh, our runs have blown way past double. But our response times are still good. Our, our coverage is still good. It, no matter what we do to, to try to adjust in our thinking, our busy companies stay busy, and, and our not busy companies don't stay. But Was the human factor looked at? Into that because oh, yeah, I mean, it's while response times are okay, the human toll that it's taking it on guys' sleep, on guys' health, we don't know what that's good. Well, we do know what that's going to do. Right. Uh, I mean, not playing the devil's advocate, other cities are way busy. Like my uncle was on Pittsburgh Fire Department for 35 years. He worked in Oakland. It was nothing for them to make 7,000 runs a year. So when he said, when people say like Engine Pie's busy at 5,000 runs, or look at Sedgwick's brother that works in, at Denver. They're making like 10,000 runs a year. That's insane. I know that. I'm not, I mean, the other but, side of it is kind of like. But they've also not addressed problems in their past, and that's why they're there now. Yeah. We're at a point where we can address problems looking forward where they didn't, they, they didn't help their people. That's, right. And they're sitting there now. 
Yeah. I'm talking about us and where we're looking at 10 years from now. And, and you know, this is this is what we're up against. Is, that's what we'll be 10 years from now. And, uh, and, and uh, when, when we make these arguments, and it's difficult for me, uh, but you gotta take the, the passion of the fire department out of it because it's a business, right? Like for me, I know what the grind is for make 5,000 runs. You ain't sleeping at all. 5,000 runs, you're making a run, you know what, 12 runs a day, 14 runs a day. So, you know, every 45 minutes, every hour, 15 minutes, you're making a run. Um, on an average, there's some days you're gonna make 30 runs. Some days you may make eight, you know, but uh, to take the passion out of it, to go to the business side, like, like you're saying, they have all the statistics across the country of these companies, there's 10 companies here in this city is making 7,000 runs, making 6,000 runs. Our response times are still uh, in seconds of meeting NFPA standards. Like, like, you haven't showed us a fall off in your performance. It's just, the response time is just one statistic. It, it absolutely is. A large pool of statistics. No, it absolutely is. Cool. But no. these are things that, that, you know, for us, that you have to make the case for. That's why I talk about meeting with your council and having these conversations. But for us, we talk about we're making this many responses, still maintaining this many inspection hours. We're still involved in this many community involvements. You know, we put all of our performance out there to say we're still making this impact to the city. We still have to have two hours of training every day. We're, we're doing this. So, you know, we're running our times up. We talk about where we use the, the run volume uh, and the heat maps will show Engine 5 is making 5,000 runs. They're no longer reliable, right? So we use this heat map. Engine 9 is now coming up here because they're off track such a percentage of time. Engine 9's up here. This is where a bulk of their runs are now. Now, uh, they're up here a, a big percentage of the time. Engine 15 is now coming out of here. Now, we can start making the case for Engine 11. These companies, Engine 20's up here now, versus if we had this company here, they would be absorbing this. And, and Engine 11, where it didn't, the response times weren't affected terribly, but what it does to us is it affects your training schedule, of who you can start bringing down here. It affects your lapping. How do you move these companies around if we have multiple alarm fire? If we have, you know, anything. It's got, it's got a lot of effects outside of response time that we explain. And when we talk to, we talk to our side, uh, and you know we've had conversation with council. We've been we've attended their meetings, and to say you're, you're representing Beachmont, like Engine 10, you, you've you this is your fire station. This is understand Engine 10 is not the one. More than likely, it's going to respond to your house, right? Engine 10 is has this area. The Engine 12 over here in Cloverleaf may be the one, or Engine 23, or it could be. 16 from down here in Old Louisville. That's who's normally going to be responding to your house. You know, this is a system in play that Engine 10 is making over 3,000 runs. They're, they're going to be off track a lot of time. So we have these conversations to get into the weeds of it. To like, this is why we need your support. This is why. Uh, but Truck 8 was a quint for a little bit. I mean, Nobody's a fan of the Quint, you know, that, but when pushed to, you got to trim your budget, what do you put in place of it? Uh, you can't yeah, hardly choose. you made about a Quint it was the first time I'd really heard it and it made pretty good sense. And the only good argument I've ever heard for a Quint is when you said something about our performance hasn't dropped, right? So it doesn't look like we're having a problem. But when you have a quint in place, it's going to be easier to argue to get additional members added to that quint for performance on the quint. The function is to add another company 
for performance of the fire department. Right. Is that correct? Right. Now, what you mean by that? That's, yes, that's Probably exactly the best argument I've ever heard. And why you would put a quint on instead of closing. I think that was the success in getting those nine members back. But yet that hasn't happened yet. When you no, say we got, nine, them, yeah. we got them back the last contract. Uh, well, but we still know that if that isn't optimal on Quinn, right? I mean, we got nine bodies back. Like, like we closed engine 11, we, put, we, we lost 15 people. Yeah. Yeah. Three captains, three sergeants, nine firefighters. We got the nine firefighter positions back, and that's where it, the five on the quints, if we're riding a normal, even day, you get five on the quints. That's where those positions came from. Uh, that's how they came back into play. Versus going through to the city to say, we want engine 11 back on track. Uh, that was gonna be a, a huge uphill battle. You know, uh, we, didn't, we weren't successful getting engine seven back on track. Engine seven, accounts for the, the most populous zone of the city of Louisville. You know, when you look at the high rises involved, you look at the apartment complexes around, uh, the downtown area, Engine Seven's area, and we, we weren't successful getting it back. So that was the Chief's idea to say, go for these positions instead of a company. We haven't been successful in restoring a company. Uh, it's pretty smart. You know, I mean, it, it is, I assure you, zero benefit to him or to anybody on staff to lose resources. That, but in place of you have to make this cut, it's hard to say we got a truck seven, engine 11, we're only going to keep an engine there, or we're only going to keep a truck there. Um, both of them are, are really important, or we wouldn't have ever started with both of them, you know. So, as a substitute, not a favorable by any means, that's how you end up with the quints. That, um, uh, you know, full transparency. We talked yesterday. Somebody brought up. Well, a rumor was uh, truck four is going to be a quint. I assure you, with all truthfulness, it was talked about. Twenty two is off track all the time. If you put truck four on track, a quint as truck four, not quint four, truck four, truck four has water in that area. Truck four don't make all the runs 22s does, but 22s out of place all the time. But that, that's, that was talked about like, man, is that something to consider that you keep water right there? Um, that's not how it played out. You know, we ended up ordering, it's gonna be a hook and ladder, but that was talked about. That was like when we're long-term planning, when we're uh, evaluating what's best overall, those are all topics that's on the table. That so right now in our long-term planning, there is no plan for an additional house and company. It's more getting positions back that we've lost. Yeah, just, yeah and, and yeah. maintaining what we have, you know what I mean? Like, Already it's been projected in the next two years there we're gonna be in a deficit. Right. I mean they they as that staff was going out, they made a projection next like two budget cycles would be a deficit. So now we're trying to maintain. We we don't want to take any more hits, we don't make any more cuts. Uh, but so just be mindful of that, that that that's coming from there that this year, they didn't ask for a reduction. So, I mean, they didn't ask for a reduction. They asked them for a pretty big jump in our budget over a few years there. It went from mid-50s to 83. Is that all personnel? It, it's the bulk of it. You know, we've, we've made small climbs in the operations side, uh, but the bulk of it is personnel costs. You know, $4 million in uh, unscheduled overtime. It was we went from 888 to 4.5, so that, that's a big jump. We went from uh, our salary increases, uh, the pension cost, you know, the percentage of the pension cost uh, is in there. So those are things that, uh, but the bulk of it is the, the salary portion. So, uh, you know, it, it's, um, 
one of the other federal or one of the other funding sources, like this federal funding, and kind of put in a perspective where we stand in the likeness. Like nobody likes us more than we like ourselves, I assure you. Uh, federal funding, Louisville got $400 million. We submitted for 27 projects and got zero dollars. So, and that ranged from a $30,000 gate to new fire stations, new apparatus, new plumbing for our fire station. It, it, I mean, roofs. We, we put in for uh, 27 projects and we got zero dollars out of 400 million. So, uh, so, <laughs> Nobody likes us more than we like ourselves, I assure you. And that's why I say when we make these arguments, you can't argue on the passion side because they don't get it. They've never taken part of it. You know, uh, metro government, the bulk of their folks show up at 8, they leave at 4, and they're checked out until they show up at 8, they leave at 4. Nobody grasps I was getting here an hour early and staying an hour later and, and nobody's being paid overtime for that and why would you do that? Why would you, you know what I mean, like nobody grasped that. Uh, those are things that you can't measure, you can't describe because they don't, they've never lived it. So when we argue on the passion side, it, it doesn't, it doesn't register for them. So I think you're talking about what Feckety is coming up with. That's that sounds like a pretty strong tool yes. you know, for showing, hey, this is what we add. Because it always looks like a loss. Yeah. You know, for us, we're like an insurance policy. You know, we're here to minimize damage. We never show oh, how we actually saved. So that sounds absolutely. really promising for the administration. And up until this program that he is messing with, we haven't reported out on it because it's been so... Years ago, Colonel Bowman had, uh, had something not as advanced as this, but it was so subjective, like um, you make an apartment fire at Dosker Manor, did you save $17 million every time you made an apartment fire at Dosker Manor? You know what I mean? Like that's the property value. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it made it look like we save billions of dollars a year. You can make an argument, but then somebody could contest it like, well, let's go with something, you know, uh, it, is this plausible? Like. So this one that he's talking about really gets into your property loss plus your, your people. I mean, it, it gets into a lot of different things that, shoot, that, that, that all comes together. That's, that's things that you can't really argue against of uh, the impact it has on the community of, um, you know, uh, uh, I was listening to a thing on the radio the other day about taxes in the community and and things that we, I, I say we, me, I don't, I, didn't, I never really dwelled on, but like they were talking about New York, the, of the current system set up in play, California, you're taxing this upper class and taxing this upper class. And like they were saying the, in New York, homeless, population or the illegal immigrant population is going to cost them ten billion dollars New York State ten billion dollars you know they got a hundred billion dollar budget or something but ten billion dollars they're taxing these upper groups and stuff you know these upper groups are like I'll go to Florida I'll go to Nash or to Tennessee to Texas where they don't have these the same income taxing uh, they can take their job mobile now. Well, when you start pulling that tax bracket out, who's going to start closing these holes of, now said $10 billion, what kind of funding are you going to be short? Because they're projecting like, I got these, I got these millionaires, I'm going to pull this big percentage of their taxes. I never thought of it here. But here, part of bringing in business, like Omni, the agreement was you don't pay taxes for a certain amount of years. We respond to all these properties that that's not our, we don't benefit from. The Elm Center doesn't pay taxes. The Fair and Expo Center, Convention Center, they don't pay taxes. These are all multi-million dollar complexes. We don't, 
we're responsible for, to respond to, but that's not a benefit to the fire department. That's not part of the taxing that funds our revenue. Uh, that doesn't minimize our responsibility to them, though. Uh, so these are all things. These are factors that that really are stacked against us that, that we're confronting and we're addressing. So, uh, like I say, for advice I've given the last couple of days, get to know your council people, have these conversations with them because they're the ones who truly can affect the budget. You know, uh, uh, they, they've done it in the past and they can do it moving forward. Uh, they can put more money in there. They can, that's their, that's a portion of their responsibility is staffing, I mean, of approving the budget. So, uh, we'll see where it goes. Um, so, uh, I, I hope that, that you have some clarity. I hope I answered some whys of, of decision making, of a direction that isn't always popular, but why they're made. They may not be like decisions, but that's the basis of what they come from. So. Anything else? I, I'm answering what all I can answer. This, to me, honestly, going downtown was, was uh, valuable to me. Because, you know, and, and the budget's not new. Uh, sergeant at Truck 8, uh, I got promoted in 03 to captain, so I was sergeant between 2000 and 2003. Uh, Major Erdman denied me a roll of tape. You know, I, I requested a roll of electrical tape. It was 98 cents, and no, we, we ain't spending no money. 